everybody, and welcome to Book Club with Bay. I'm Bay, and this is Bay. Say hi, Bay. Hi, Bay. And today we are talking about Vampire Academy. Uh, is it called Vampire Academy? Is that the series? Yes. Okay. It's the it's the first book and the series. Okay. So yeah, we're talking about Vampire Academy, which is the first book in the Vampire Academy series, and yes. yeah, so. Um, because we finished Harry Potter, yes, so we're we doing did. this now. Uh, and, and it's it, it this, was so crazy listening to it because I was like, "It's so good." <laughs> yeah, and, and this is going to be an interesting series, right? For two reasons, because our two favorite bad authors, Jenny and the cast duo. It, it, it's got some really good comparisons to both of them. Like like we've said before, Co the Covenant series is a lot of a lot of the plot points is a complete and utter rip off of Vampire Academy, and a lot of Jenny's concepts, uh, Rochelle Mead has done. Yeah. Uh, you, now that I was thinking about it. Yeah, so so that's going to be interesting to discuss that. Um, but then, um, this is also a vampire boarding school in comparison to House of Night, which is also vampire boarding school, but so different, <laughs> so utterly yeah, different. Yeah, and then the also, and I just remember like having the thought um while we were reading this or while i was listening to this like oh it's like all it's like a lot of the concepts as far as characters go that the cast were trying to do but well done and it's just like it is such subtle changes that i'm like how does anybody ever get this wrong <laughs> mm. Mm. but We'll get into it um, because I do have a lot to say about the main character Rose. Because mm. there's a lot that like would make that character She's very so unlikable. Yeah. If she, it was done incorrectly. Yeah. Well, that's what I was going to say as well. Like, um, she manages to toe the line. Like, for example, Rose flirting, like flirting with people to try, ease tension and shit like that. It's done in a way that people actually speak to each other, but it also reads well. Yeah. Because a lot, oh, that's one thing that I've done, like I've noticed with in like re listening to this book as well, is um, there's a lot of realistic dialogue, because a lot of book dialogue isn't the most realistic. You know, like the epic speech in a book is not something that ever actually gets said in real life. And if you try to, it's like really corny. Yeah. It's like, what the fuck are you doing? But this book manages to do dialogue in a way that is realistic and not corny sounding if you say it out loud. Um, but it's also not too, like, it's not too realistic, but it's not too fictional, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, it's the right balance. Right. Yeah, because that's how dialogue is. I mean, because dialogue is essentially like we've talked about a snapshot, a <laughs> summary of conversations. Yeah. So if it was realistic, we've talked about this before, it would sound dumb. Um, yeah. And it would be very annoying. But she just, she does so many things with Rose the right way that you take yeah. this character that, by, but that in the hands of most authors would she be would so be annoying. Yeah. We'd want, like, honestly, we would want to kill her more than we want to kill Zoe. <laughs> but well, I really well, like it's, her. It's like this is, um, it will, okay, we'll go to the Covenant series because, again, heavily influenced by Vampire Academy. Like, freaking, like, it's like the first book is pretty much following the Vampire Academy, like, plot line point by point almost type thing. Mm -hmm. um, but Alex, fucking horrible character yeah but you can tell though that she was supposed to be like rose mm -hmm. 
like almost exactly like Rose. But She's we not. couldn't stand we couldn't stand Alex because she was fucking awful. Right. Um, but we'll get into that. So rating yeah. food. Rating. Um I am going to rate it oh something yummy but bad for you because it's YA. Um I'm gonna I'm gonna rate it chocolate gelato. I was just gonna go with like a brownie. I almost went brownie, but I think I've done brownie before and I try not to reuse. Oh, whoops. <laughs> I don't know if I've used that before. You've done I a lot know. of books, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it might happen. You know, because again, like the book is YA. It's clearly YA. It follows the YA themes and everything like that, but it's enjoyable. I don't sit there and go, Oh my God, kill me. Like, that's the thing, is that the YA stuff should be, you should be sitting there thinking like, okay, it's YA. Not, oh, fucking kill me, it's YA. Like, that's the thing, is like, you shouldn't yeah. be so distracted by the fact that it's, you should be able to take in the fact that it's YA, adjust your, um, what am I trying to say? Expectations yes. accordingly. And then enjoy it. And it should still be good. Mm. Yeah. And so, like, there's there are a number of things that, like, if this were an adult book that it would go into more. And we can get into that because I do have I do have notes about that. Um, like, certain things where I'm like, I feel like this could have been expanded. But also, it's just, like, the age range as to why it wasn't. Um, but everything that's done is done well. Also, mm -hmm. the, the plot is actually really um tight like there's things don't things aren't wasted things are actually yeah. set up properly like towards yeah. the end you're like oh you actually set that up well done <laughs> I, I forgot that authors did this wow <laughs> it's you been a minute ahead. <laughs> i'm proud holy of holy crap somebody outlined <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, I will. I will say though, there were a couple of things that, and I, I think this is the narrator's fault. There were times I'm like, "Fuck, Rose is petulant," but I think it was how the narrator worded it. Um, like when she's first, like when we'll get into like the plot later, but when they're leaving, um. Um, Karova's office and it's her and Dimitri and he keeps calling Lissa Vasilissa and she's like Lissa call her Lissa she did it in such a whiny voice yeah I was like Lissa call her Lissa fuck what's wrong with you why do you keep calling her Vasilissa like that was the kind of tone she used but I, like when I read it I just read it as look call her Lissa she hates being called Vasilissa just heads yeah, up yeah because like Rose's personality is so like, hey, bitch, focus. Good shit to do. Yeah, it. Yeah, she's very much like, hey, hurry up. <laughs> like that's her personality. Yeah. So her being like, Lisa, you call, mm. <laughs> it doesn't. Like, it didn't I, make sense. But the narrator did give her a few of those moments. But like whenever I, like yeah, to your point, when I read it as like. A teenager. I yeah, I didn't read it. In my time. brain went my brain went, Lissa. Call her Lissa. Yeah. Not like <laughs> why? Um, but characters. Characters. Rosemary Hathaway, aka Rose. Um, well, I think in before we do characters, we should just explain the world a bit. So in this Oh yes. World um, there are two kinds of vampires. Um, there's the Maroi and the Strigoi. Maroi are born, they're living, breathing, they have elemental magic. Um, they have a slightly longer lifespan than humans, but not by much. They can eat normal food, but they also need blood because they're vampires. Um, sunlight doesn't kill them, but it hurts them, it, like it weakens them. Um, I guess that's important 
information there. Um, mm -hmm. Strigoi are the stereotypical evil vampires and you can become Strigoi either by being turned by one or if you're a Maroi, you drain someone to death and you automatically become a Strigoi. Um, they're, they're dead, no magic. Sunlight does kill them. Silver stakes kill them. Fire, oh, sorry, enchanted silver stakes kill them. Fire kills them, beheading. Super strong, super fast. Any And any human, Maroi, or Dampi um, Dampiers. She kept on calling them Dampires in this book, which was also frustrating because it's Dampier. Um, they can all be turned to Stravoy. And then there's Dampiers, which are, um, back in the day, Maroi and humans banged and bred, and their half-breeds are like, you know, best of both worlds kind of thing, except for the magic. And they can't breed with each other, but a Maroi and a Dampy hooking up make more Dampies. So that's how their race continues. And they guard the Maroi. Done. Yep. Okay. So back to characters. Then. And you could almost, real quick, you could almost say it's like a little cult-like in how the dampiers are sort of like taught to they guard first. the Maroi. Yeah. Which is addressed um, in the series. It's it's absolutely addressed, which is it's cool how it's addressed. Yeah. Because they talk about it. Um like they don't just let they, that go. Yeah, and um dampiers as well, like most male dampiers become guardians. Um, most female ones may become guardians initially, but once they have kids, they usually stop guardian, guardianing. Yeah. And they raise their families, and they have a really bad reputation. Pretty much every every student, like every Maroi and every student at the Academy Dampier and Maroi alike think that all, like that any female Dampy, who is raising her children, they usually live in Dampy communes. Um, they all think that they're just blood wars. <laughs> it's like that's yep. your mother you're talking about. How dare you? Yeah, they're like, but they're like, yeah, but you're not guarding the Maroi, you terrible people. And it's like, but, but also, <laughs> they're God raising damn. their family. It's but, harsh and. and I also like though that Rose is like, I can't stand my mother because she didn't raise me. She went back to being a guardian when I was two. Um, and I was raised by the academy since then, but she also thinks that that's the right thing to do. So I do like though that they address those really conflicted feelings. Like Rose doesn't just think them and it's just like, yeah, well, that's reasonable. Like in this book, she gets pulled out of it like because she's bitching about her mom. And they're like, well, would you have rather she didn't become like stay a guardian? And she's like, no, I'm going to be a guardian too. And they're like, well, why are you mad at her then? Yeah. And then she talks about Dimitri's mother and she's like, yeah, blood whore. Oh crap. <laughs> and he's, yeah, like, so, he's like, yeah, parent. <laughs> and she's like, I'm going to go sit in the corner. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And there's things like, okay. Um, yeah. And then there's things about Rose as well that, I, again, I really like just how flawed and contradictory the characters are because that's how people are. Yeah. Like Rose does everything for Lissa, but as the series progresses, she starts to resent. She loves Lissa, but she also kind of resents her as it goes on. And, like, we start to see the seeds of that a little bit in this. Not too much in this book, but it gets worse as it goes on um, until she actually addresses it. But... Sorry. I'll be back. Do you want to um, go into characters? Yeah, I'll go into characters. Yeah, okay. so there's Rose, who is the main character, and she is a... Um, Oh my god, I forgot what the word is. She's one of the Dampiers. Yeah, she's a Dampier. And um 
So she is, and she is Lissa's guardian, and they have been on the run from the school for quite a while, and you don't find out why until later, but that's all you know at the beginning of the book, so that's what, so that is where we will start. Um, and Rose is, like we've talked already about, like, like we have already talked about, she's a very flawed character. Um, really, in a lot of other authors' hands, she would not be likable at all. But because of the way she's handled here, she is very likable. Um, so, you've watched the movie. Well, we don't talk about the movie here. So, we pretend like that didn't happen. Um, but, yeah, she would not be very likable um, in another author's hands. Because she's very, uh, she's very assertive and... Um, she takes care of Lissa because Lissa really, Lissa kind of needs like a full-time carer because of the way that her powers affect her. Um, and Rose is pretty much happy to do it, but you can tell that she's like getting to a point where she kind of wants her own life, but she's like really conflicted about it. It's a whole thing. And it's really interestingly done. And it's almost like you can have actual characters in a book, PC and Kristen cast. <clears throat> anyway, so Lissa. So Lissa is Rose's best friend. She is a Maroi. She is one of one of like the royal bloodlines of the Maroi. And she is um she's like really nice. At least that's how she's presented. Um, but she's a very like broken and troubled human being, or vampire, whatever, you know what I mean. Uh, she's a very broken and troubled human being, and she's, like I said, she needs kind of like a full-time caregiver. So that, um, that's kind of like where she is at the beginning of the book. Yeah, and then there's Dimitri. And Dimitri is the hot vampire teacher. Yeah. Dan Dan P teacher, thank you. Yeah, that, whatever. Yeah, he um because Rose well Rose is in line to be Lissa's guardian, but because Lissa's the last the very last because there's also twelve royal bloodlines and the ruler of all the Maroi and Dan Pees always comes from one of those families. Lissa is the last living person in her, her bloodline. Um, so she gets two guardians, but because she's at school, um, she doesn't really need two yet. So Rose is in line to be her guardian and Dimitri is her assigned guardian and he's also helping Rose train when they get back to school because she needs to catch up. She missed two years. <laughs> And he's Russian. Yes. Well, he's Siberian. Yes. So. And we're in love with him. I'm not in love with him in this book because of the narrated freaking voice for him. Yes. Well, everybody just needs to know that Dimitri is boy portioned. Yes. So. As long as, as long as I don't have to hear that fucking accent again, which we don't because oh, the good, next two thank God. I was like the ne- Okay, the next two books have the same narrator. I was like, like okay. this, yeah. It was like okay, so this book Russia. Dimitri's still hot. It's just the narrator. <laughs> yeah, so um the narrated this book, that's it. She's done for the series. Okay. The next two okay. books two and three have an the same narrator like as each other she makes the major just sound like a girl she, like she doesn't even like man his oh, voice up like right. there's this one bit where he's like laughing he's just like oh rosa and but she, just like oh rosa like ah, you're so cute oh rosa you're so <laughs> adorable oh my god <laughs> like he just sounds yeah like a woman and then um Good. And then the narrator that does books four to six and all of Bloodlines 
she she does what she can because he's supposed to have somewhat of a Russian accent, but she manages like she manages to have a bit of something there without it being like, oh god, kill me. Yeah, she toes the line. <laughs> like really, if you can't do the accent, you might as well just not do an accent. Well, I think that's what narrator number two's plan was. I don't think she could do the Russian accent, so she's just like, oh, fuck it. But she could have at least made his voice deep. Yeah. Um, so that's Dimitri. And you know what? I remember there being more of Dimitri in this book. As, like, a kid? What? Um, I feel like no, nah, he's not. He's he's not in. He's. I mean, he's obviously like a main player in this book, but he's not. He doesn't take up a lot of page time in this book. Yeah, I was like, I remember, like, I guess as a teenager, I was like, Dimitri is the only plot line that matters. I don't give a fuck about the rest of this bullshit. Um. So I guess I remember him taking up way more of the plot. But I swear to God, he took up way more of the plot. Yeah, well, I was actually thinking about this the other day. Like, I mean, oh, in most um, YAs, like, yeah, it, there's usually, like, you know, a book-by-book -book plot, an overarching plot, and the romantic subplot. But, the, but let's be honest, the most important plot in YA is the romantic subplot. With this... Yeah, for sure. The, there's there's the book by book plots, the overarching plot, the romantic subplot. But honestly, I I always take away whenever I've reread re this series that the main the main plot that should be focused on in the series should actually be Rose trying to work out like Rose working out how how to have a healthy relationship with Lisa because because I, I still had my headphones in when. I was off, um, but and you're right with Lisa. She's she's the sweetest thing ever, and that that that's just how she is. Like it's like she has her emotional breakdowns and everything, and mental breakdowns and everything because you know um, of what spirit does to her. But she would do anything for Rose, but Rose just Rose. Like, that's the theme of the series. Like, Rose is just constantly putting Lissa before herself. And Lissa has just always taken it for granted. She's never actually realised. And there comes a turning point later on in the series where that changes. Like, and Lissa, Lissa clicks and she's like, fuck, you haven't been letting me in at all because she didn't want to worry me. The fuck is wrong with you type thing? Mm -hmm. um, and that's one thing that I think this series is really good at. It's... Like, the romantic subplot does have a lot of page time throughout the whole series. But I think it's, I think the main relationship that's important in this series is the one between the two girls. Yeah. Which is nice. You don't get a lot of YA that has that. Yeah, no, you don't. And also, given how, like, given how, I guess, like, in this age group, that this is that this was targeted at or is targeted at. I go with was because the series has been complete for a while now. Um, it's like a plot line that is actually, and I normally don't say this about fiction, but that's actually important and that you actually can learn something from. Because mm -hmm. in most YA, I would never say something like that out loud, but because it like really dives into like a lot of mental illness stuff and it talks and it just goes into oh, yeah. like the complications of being friends with somebody and, and people that you would do anything for, but also like how to have healthy relationships and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. It's like, it, it handles it all really well. Yeah. And it's just like, wow, like good, like good for you. You did a good job. Yeah. No, I, yeah. Like this, this series, uh, yeah, you're right. Like, it does do a lot of really good stuff. Because Rose, like, as we've said before, Rose is a very deeply flawed character. However, some some of those flaws, again, 
is like in relation to Lissa, her flaws are Rose isn't selfish enough when it comes to Lissa. She's absolutely selfless when it comes to Lissa. And that's a really unhealthy relationship. You can't be self like a hundred percent selfish, like selfless with people. Right. And part of it is also like their culture, which is also interesting where it's like you have to give up your life for a, another person. Yeah. And if you don't, you're a terrible person. And so there's also that yeah. whole element to it. I know we're talking about the emu war in the chat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. 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 I'm sorry, but yeah, no, I don't know how they got to emu war in the chat, but yeah, no. We had a war against emus, and the humans lost. All right, real quick, because I know Addie's watching. Um, <laughs> my vape tastes like rum. But why is the rum gone? I don't know what happened. No, the rum's right there. <laughs> I don't know what happened. Yeah, yes, we do, going. Maggie. Honestly. <laughs> Honestly, the, middle, <laughs> the conflict in the Middle East would have been solved years ago had they just dropped emus there. I think I just heard Addie laugh. That's <laughs> also, though. Um, anyway, <laughs> if you like become a person, you can come say hi. By the way, you're allowed to like leave your room. Um, Stay in your room, Addie. I you know I can't hear you when you yell like that. <laughs> anyway, um, so <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so the plot. Do, wait, do, what characters did we do? We did three. Oh, we didn't There's do all characters. characters. Yeah. So next That's to right. that is Christian. Sorry. <laughs> Christian, I guess. I'm a dumb fuck. I'm like, right, this is okay, a good what, book with one, people that matter. Okay, I know we don't talk about the movie, but I do have to say one thing about the movie. The guy that plays Christian in the movie, I was like, ugh. And then I just watched Shadowhunters on Netflix, all of it, you know, and he plays Jace, mm -hmm. and I'm just like, god damn. <laughs> god damn, he's fucking. Christian is one of my favorite characters, and I don't think I remembered Christian I like Christian. I life. love Christian. He's like just this snarky, sarcastic, but sweet as all fuck. But one thing I love, right? Another thing about that she did well. Um, he's so sweet and would do anything for Lissa. But he'll also say, hey, Lissa, what you're doing is fucked up. Not cool. Yeah, he'll. he's also like not afraid to walk away from her either. Which is important. Yeah, like... He's, like, he's so sweet to her and everything like that. But, I mean, not so much at the beginning of this book. Like, he's a sarcastic arsehole for a bit and they end up, you know, improving each other, bringing out each other's best qualities and stuff. But how he manages to bring out her best qualities is he pushes her. He doesn't just be like, oh, you're with me. You like me. I adore you, so I'm just going to agree with everything you say. He's like, no, Liz, like, what you're doing right now ain't good. You're a retard. Let's do it better. Yeah, he pretty much does the opposite of what Rose does, and what's cool is that Rose actually goes, um... Yeah. <laughs> Which is what makes her so likable, because you're like, good for you. You're growing yeah. and learning things. And I'm proud. <laughs> And I really like as well the way that um, this series tackles, it's like it, it's not as big a thing like, you know, when you're an adult, but like when you're still in high school and it's just been you and your best friend for years and then they get a boyfriend that they're absolutely smitten with and you're like, but what about me type thing? They deal with Rose's jealousy of Christian very well. Mm-hmm. Because Rose gets very jealous of Christian and his relationship with Lisa throughout the series multiple times. And yeah. it's dealt with well. Yeah. I like that it's even a thing that gets brought up. Because usually it's just like, well, oh, they're something... with their new boyfriend. Yay, now I can focus more with, with my forbidden love. Well, it's something that happens um, 
it's one of those growing pains of being a teenager, yeah. you know? Hello. Yeah. It's one of those growing pains of being a teenager. Um, yeah. So, yeah, you come on this side. Okay. <laughs> I have a balloon. Hello, internet. I can't hear Hi. you. Hi. What's up? Bye. This Hi. is Addie. Everybody hello. say hello. This is my house. Welcome to my house. Um, and I mean, it's very pixelated. We were. It happens. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, it's um, okay. I'm, I'm, I'm getting used to looking at you guys in like, you know, 8-bit format. It should be better, hopefully, next time. But we, um. I, I, again, no, I don't know if it's me or not. It's probably a combo right now, to be honest with you. Because I live yeah, in the middle of nowhere. Because so it's like mountain plus Aussie old. internet. Yep. Well, it's not my internet. It's, it's my computer. <laughs> my computer's oh. old and fucked and takes well, forever to process anything. <laughs> also, right now, Addie is power reading the House of Night series. And her brain Good. is melting. She was reading them out loud to me in the car oh last night. So she so was funny. like, have an audio book. I was like, oh, good. <laughs> I'm ready. And I was doing <laughs> wonderful voices for everyone. Yes, okay. I heard. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I did sample for yeah, well, her. Oh, yes. What book are you up to? Um, chosen. Yep. Yep. I'm what in chapter five of Chosen to? right now. I. I, Awaken. Okay. Yeah, so well, I have to like power read. <laughs> but you did that in two yeah, days. I did that in, in a day. So yeah, like, the, I mean, the, the, up, the upside is they don't take long. <laughs> no, they are very short books, so it's not that bad. Um, and this weekend I'll have a lot of time on Sunday to just binge read, so hopefully I can finish one or two on just Sunday itself. <laughs> it's going to so be a painful. time. <laughs> Oh, You're going to need all the alcohol to recover. <laughs> all of the alcohol. Well, I keep like a little notes doc. Um, That's what just, we do. Yeah, I'm just like all my complaints and I just read them out to her and I'm just like, I, why? Why did like 11 year old me not question any of this? Because we, well, like, we were 11, okay? It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> we were just like, the picture that they put in the hardcover of Stark is hot. Therefore, the book is good. Stark was my favorite character. And I'm ready for him to not be my favorite character this time. But I'm going to yeah, stubbornly um, make him it. But. I, yeah, I, I liked Stark a lot more. I, st I still don't dislike Stark, but he's a lot more cucky than I remember. Yeah, because there's like a whole conversation with Eve where they're like, I don't enjoy that you're fucking Zoe. But, but uh, I don't enjoy cool. that you're fucking he, Zoe. He so much. But they're like, but you're uh, not I was that so bad. Glad when he we died. can fuck Zoe together, and it's yeah, like, essentially. <sighs> yeah. It's weird. That's what I remember. <laughs> Honestly, they want to spit roast Zoe. <laughs> they would if she said <laughs> spit roast me now. They would, and they would high five afterwards, Res yep. respectfully, of course. Respectfully, yes, she's a high respectfully, priestess. of course, because that's what matters. Oh my god. No, it's, it's, um, <laughs> but we're not talking, okay. Yeah, I know. Okay, we're talking about train crash. It's not this week. See, Next time. Yeah. <laughs> um, so We've Christian's a good, we're tangent. <laughs> Christian is a good character. He is, I enjoy We like him. Um, and I guess pretty much all the other characters will just mention as they become, oh, Victor, I guess. I guess he's an important one to preface. Oh, yeah. Um, he, he He's the prince of his line because the oldest member of a royal family is a prince or princess. Um, he is his family's prince, mm -hmm. but he's got some weird fucked up. He's got like pretty much the only disease that affects Maroi and it's aging him and killing him and he's on... Like, in the span of the book, he's got maybe a couple months to live. By the end, he's got about three weeks to live. Yeah. Until so the plot twist happens. Dun, dun, dun. So the dun. Yeah. <laughs> so plot. I thought... <laughs> 
Check. I love you. I thought Mara was in a completely different location, but at first, but it just occurred to me that she. <laughs> the balloon in the corner. I have this. I usually just have the lights on over there, but I've got this light on today. So. Oh, yeah, no, I'm sorry. I was like, what am I doing? I'm like, I'm still next to my kitchen. My bench is right here, as usual. Yeah. Oh, I really wish I had a room that had a desk in it that wasn't next to the kitchen, but what can you do? It's what okay. Um, the little house. Yep. Yeah. So the plot. I will let you guys continue. I'm going to go read Josie. Okay. Don't say hello to me. You're good. <laughs> Is it mean to tell her to have fun? No, you're okay. Is that mean? No. Is that sadistic? You did your best. <laughs> I don't, I don't, don't suicide? Like, yes, I don't know what don't, sense you would. Yes, don't suicide. <laughs> okay. Um, so plot. Yeah, plot. Um, so start off, um, Rose is having a nightmare of the car crash that killed Lissa's family. Um, but because if, yeah, if about a year or I think before or a few months before they ran away, Rose, um, Lissa's parents and brother were killed in a car accident and Rose and Lissa were in the car as well and they survived. Or so we thought. Yes. <laughs> Oh, yes, it does give you a major ego boost as an author to read those books. You're like, yes, if these are famous, I will be famous. <laughs> I've got really this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so Rose wakes up and realizes it's not her nightmare, it's Lissa's, and then we discover they have a psychic link. Oh, my God, so she wakes Lissa up and then... Lissa drinks her blood, which makes her as high because, you know, she's hungry. Um, and then Rose sees a dark figure on the street and she's like, run, bitch. So they try and run, but she's still high and Lissa's slow because she's a Maroi. Um, they get caught and it's Dimitri. And then Rose passes out and then they're back at school. Yep. And she's not happy about that. No, she is not. And then mean and march them through the commons. I also like the fact that, you know, their dining room is just, like, where they eat is just the commons. It's They don't try and fancy it up, like, in House of Night, where it's, like, the dining hall or whatever the fuck they call it. Yeah. But then, but then also, right, okay, I'm just going to say with House of Night again, I also really can't stand that it's just, like, the dining hall, which is really just a fancy way of saying cafeteria. And it's like, we'll just call it the cafeteria. Then if you're going to point it out every time, I think we all know what a dining hall is. Yeah. Like if you're going to, if like you call it a dining hall then just call it a dining hall, like it's okay. Yeah. Like, like, I'm like look, JK Rowling called it a great hall and nobody freaked out. Yeah. This book simply just refers to it as the commons and she doesn't specify what the commons is until they walk through it and everyone's eating breakfast. It's like, oh, I guess that's where they eat. Yeah. Done. Um, um, so they... Um, oh, fuck, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah, so they get marched through to the headmistress, and she's like, shame on you, Lissa, for running away. You are the last of your line. How absolutely dare you for putting yourself at risk, and you, young lady. And then she turns to Rose, and she's like, you're expelled. And Dimitri's like, but no. And Lissa's like, but no. They're all but no. So she's like, fine, you get another chance, Rose, but you are grounded. One toe out of line, and you will be on your way. So that's... And she has to do extra training sessions with Dimitri. Which, oh no. Oh no, I have to hang out with the hot guy every day. Oh no, what a shame. I'm very, very, yeah, I'm so upset. <laughs> she does get upset though, because he's, he's a fucking hard ass when it comes to training. He just makes a run. That's true. For weeks, like, can't for we, weeks. Can't we like almost have sex in like any other way other than this because it sucks no. <laughs> not having fun yeah um 
so yeah the, and they're more or less trying oh part, a big part of why um they <clears throat> agree to let Rose stay is because Dimitri because he's not a dum-dum works out like within two seconds that the girls have a bond um which is something that hasn't happened in centuries um where a guardian can sense shit about Dev Maroi. Um, yeah. And um, they're like, oh, well, we can't waste the bond then. So, you know, like, you know. Um, so then Rose starts back in class. It quickly relieves tension with some flirty humor jokes with um, a couple of her old friends, Mason and Eddie. I love Eddie. I love Eddie. He's a very, he's, he's barely a character in this book, but he gets, he becomes a main player later. <clears throat> Um, <clears throat> and Mason has a crush on Rose. Um, yes. And so pretty much they're just, you know, sorting shit out. Lissa goes up to that church attic. Um, and cause that's where she used to go whenever she wanted to just be alone or, you know, think or whatever. But someone has taken over her space, and who could it be but Christian Ozera? Um, he's also royal, um, but his parents turned to a boy when he was really little, and he saw them get murdered. Well, he sees it as them getting murdered because to him, he know he like he understands logically, but when he was little, like again, he was a little kid, and they were his parents, so he's just always seen it as as his parents getting murdered right in front of him, but they were killed because they were evil. Right. So, um, well, don't we find out that like this Strigoi are not bad later? No, 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 they're, they're bad. Um, they just, um, they're just m more capable of interaction that like at first it kind of just makes it seem like they're just mindless killing machines like initially like that's how we initially think of them until later on when like we spend the whole book hanging out with Shroboy. Um, yeah so that so they're evil but it's more like they're sociopathic psychopaths than just must have blood must have it now yeah. Um, okay, I couldn't remember. Yeah, no. Um, they're not supposed to be really capable of... They're not particularly capable of working in large groups for extended periods because, you know, it's all about the power play type thing. Um, so they end up killing each other if they hang out for too long. And that doesn't really change, but... Like, there's still a lot of tension, but we do see big groups of them working together later. Okay. So, yeah, so, um, yeah, so, um, his, yeah, his parents apparently tried to, because after they turned Shrigoi, his aunt was looking after him, and then his parents came back to try and take him, and that's when the guardians came and killed him. Um, so he's, yep. um, so no one talks to him or anything like that because it's just like, oh, God, he's he's the kid of the Strigoi. You know, he's going to be a Strigoi one day, blah, blah, blah. Like, there's just a massive taboo about him and his family. So they bond, I guess, over their own mutual isolation. Yeah. Um, yeah. More or less. Oh, um... Victor is also there. He was really good friend uh, at the meeting with the head headmistress. Victor was also there. Um, and he was like, no, let Rose stay. And he's getting old and getting decrepit. He makes random appearances throughout the book. Um, honestly, like, while a lot of stuff happens, like Rose flirts with a guy, um, get walks up with him, gets half naked with him, Dimitri walks in and go, loses his shit. Like a lot of the stuff that happens, it's not like epically major, but it, it all still ties in into it all. So I'm just yeah. trying to think of everything that happened. 
Um, yeah, because that happens. And I also remember that being like such a thing, like as <laughs> as a teenager, because I was like, <gasps> oh my God. Yeah. Um, and he'd um, become somewhat of an antagonist, like minor antagonist, but he becomes somewhat of an antagonist for the rest of the series that he's in. What, Mason? No, Jesse. Oh, right. Sorry. Yeah, because Rose was hooking up with Jesse in this book. Um, like just the ones they were flirting for a bit and then they end up hooking up and Dimitri walks in and loses his shit at the two of them and scares the shit out of Jesse. Um, and, but Jesse worked out in that, though, that um, Rose was feed, feeding Lissa um, while they were away, which is really taboo. It's... Dampiers don't give blood to Maroi ever because it's it's in like because Maroi give off endorphins so like effectively yeah it gets you high so it's just a very taboo thing to do um, so but he doesn't tell anyone it initially until um, Liz's ex boyfriend's new girlfriend starts trying to cause trouble for them and Rose just makes it worse by getting overly protective and really mean. Yep. Um, so then she sleeps with Jesse and his best friend, so they would start rumours that Rose slept with the two of them and that she's a blood whore herself and this and that, and that she let them drink her blood. Yep. So that's a major thing for the book. Um, Lissa keeps finding dead animals in her room. She's sharing yes. a room with Victor's daughter. Um, so, yeah, that's a, that actually is a relevant plot point. <laughs> that's a really relevant plot point. She keeps yeah, finding dead animals. Sorry, go. Yeah, there's a lot of dead animals. Um, yeah, like a lot of things, the order is not all that important um no it's pretty much just because it, again it's a lot of this like similar stuff happening repetitively in different ways yeah I mean, it's just one of, yeah because it's one of those plot structures like there's nothing wrong with it i'm just trying to think yeah. it's just hard to like i didn't write it down and i should have um but you know, well, oh i will say there is this plot point where at some point um, because of like Christian's personality, Rose is like he's not good for Lisa or for Lisa. Yeah, there's there's no way that that can be a thing. Um, he's he's abrasive. He's not nice. Is bad. Yeah, I gotta put a stop to it. Also, she's a little jealous. Um, so at one point. She finally snaps and goes up to him and she's just like, she doesn't like you. And she's always telling me about like, how creepy he off. is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, you're just creepier than fuck. And, like, we as the audience know that Rose is projecting all of this onto what Lissa is feeling. Like, yeah. we know that Lissa doesn't think he's creepy. We know that Lissa actually does like him. Yeah. Um, and we know that Rose knows that. We also just know that Rose is in denial. Yeah. So Christian, well, Rose, like Rose, thinks that Christian will be bad for Lissa. So she won't, and she knows that Lissa won't listen to her about Christian. So she lies to Christian. Right. So Christian fucks off because he's like, okay, don't want to be yeah. around that wanted. Um, and then Liz is really sad because Christian fucked yeah. off. And he just starts ignoring her. And then you just get like a number of times where Rose is like, like the first time Rose is like, this was the right decision, even if it totally does not look like it right now. And then the yeah. next time she's like, this was the right decision, even though this was totally the probably wrong, the right decision. And then the next time she's like, I think I fucked up maybe a little bit. Nope, nope, everything's fine. And then she's like, I fucked up. <laughs> I fucked up. Yeah. And um, then when she apologizes, she sends somebody to apologize for her. 
And then she walks up to Christian and she's like, did you do the thing? Cause I sent someone to apologize for me. And he's like, I'll do it when you apologize to my face, you fucking coward. And she's like, that's fair. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I'm sorry, <laughs> which is why it makes her like likable because in a lot of ways, Rose is a lot, has a lot of Zoe's personality traits. Yeah. It's just that, like, they put it with an author that knew how to handle it. Yes, and and part of, um, I mean, and I do forgive a lot of, as the series goes on, I forgive a lot of Rose's flaws as well because we don't know this yet, but in this book, we especially after each animal attack or something, we see Liz's grasp on her mental health um, not going back into suicidal depression crap um, it, she struggles more and more throughout the book and we find out why um, but then we learn later that Rose um, because of their bond Rose is taking some of that depression and insanity from Lisa and it presents itself differently in different spirit users or their shadow kissed yeah, like Bond partners, I guess. Yeah. Bond mates. Yeah. Um, sorry, I just remembered the term. But yeah. Um, but even so before when, you know that, the way that she's handling yeah. herself is is likable. So it's not like yeah. you take a really unlikable character and then you give them an excuse and you're expected to go, oh, okay. You have somebody with flaws that are already forgivable and then you also give them like an extra out. Yeah. And I think, I think um, someone... Um, like the chat just said, Rose is a lot more self-aware than Zoe. That, that's true. But I think also one thing, one big difference as well is when Rose acts like a petulant child, there's someone there to say, Rose, you're acting like a petulant child. And she's like, yeah, I guess I am. Whereas in House of Night, Zoe acts like a petulant child. And they're like, but I don't know why Eric's upset that you have three other boyfriends. Shame on him. Yeah, because it's like, not about Rose being self-aware. It's about the authors knowing what Rose... It's about the authors knowing what they're doing or the author knowing yeah. what she's doing. And it's about the and, author deciding what to do with that. And when the author is like, Rose does this thing that's bad, but she does it for these reasons that make sense at the time. It makes sense for like the age that she... The, the age yeah. that she is, the situation that she's in and the information that she has, the, the emotional situation that she's in and all that kind of stuff, they make her make this situation, they make her make this decision, and then the consequences play out, and then yeah. the thing happens, uh, then yeah. This book has consequences. Yeah. yeah, and and Rose knows her flaws, she recognizes her flaws, and she tries to improve on those. So that's, that is what makes her a likable character, because again, the fact that she can rec like she knows when she's good at something like because also that's the other thing as well she went into um training when they first got back to school thinking i'm awesome i'm like i don't, I don't need any extra help you know i'm fucking amazing i kept Lissa alive for two years on our own and then she gets her ass handed to her in training and she's like yeah i'm so not ready for this <laughs> yeah and she's like maybe extra training is a good idea and then by no, halfway through the book, bad. yeah. And then by halfway through the book, she like she says to Dimitri, "I need to become a better guardian so I can protect Lissa." And he's like, "Well, we're gonna have to double your training." And she's like, "Done. Let's do it." Like she she knows where she's lacking and she works on on those issues. And whereas. Yeah, Zoe, she just walk, she wakes up a vampire and she's like, oh, I'm awesome, I think. And everyone's like, yeah, you're awesome. And she's like, okay, I'm awesome. And then that, that's it. Yeah. Well, and then even Alex, like, even though Alex had to train, she was just perfect the entire time. After she figured out how to fall. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay, yeah, speaking of Alex... Um, we'll get it, like we'll get more comparisons, like as like the series goes on, because fuck, there are again just epic fucking like oh my god, really, you know. Um, but honestly, I do think that pretty much the 
only reason why she had Alex have extra training was for the romantic subplot. Well, yeah. Whereas, the where in this, obviously, she went into it knowing that there would be a romantic subplot with Rose and Dimitri because you know it starts in this book, but that is and but that comes about like as a natural byproduct of the relationship they develop, whereas it's not like, and she does need the training and she ex acknowledges she needs the training. So it actually is relevant to her character. Yeah. I guess. Mm -hmm. um, and one thing, and one thing I also just really liked about Rose is, yeah, she's skilled, she's talented, she's strong, she's this and that, but she's not special. Whereas, yeah. like in a lot of in a lot of YAs, it's like there's always something about the protagonist chick. Like in Covenant, it's she's the Apollyon. In House of Night, it's she's you know got all the elements. Um, name in in Twilight, for example, no one can read her thoughts. No one can get into her head. Psychic powers don't work on her. Whereas Rose, she's yeah, she has a bond with Lissa. But she's not special. Liz is special. Her best friend's the special one. Yeah, not her. Mm. She just happened to be friends with her. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, th I guess we should go into um, the plot about Liz's mental health and spirit and everything as well. So throughout the book, we um, Rose starts going to churches, apologizes and reason to get out of her dorm because she's grounded to her dorm and to see Lissa because Lissa goes to church every Sunday and they keep the the priest dude is always talking about Saint Vladimir and how he was insane but a miracle worker um he was so blessed with spirit he had his shadow kissed Anna this and that um and Rose trying Rose just feels drawn to Vladimir's story. So she looks into it and then she ends up working out that, oh, she ends up getting told, but she sees pl plenty of links between Vladimir and Lissa. So she, Rose is the key to figuring out that Lissa, um, her element um, is spirit because she didn't, never specialized because everyone's forgotten about spirit because there are so few spirit users that it's kind of just the forgotten element yeah so um and it's explained in the book that like air users get draw their magic from the air water users draw their magic from water and so on and so forth whereas spirit draws its magic from your own spirit which is why it causes mental instability see the only thing that i remembered from this series was like the dimitri thing um because before we did this, I told you, I was like, I remember he's a person, he's Russian, he's hot, and he does a thing. And you were like, okay. Um, it's a lot more to this series than Dimitri. And, well, look, 13-year-old uh, SDA had priorities. Um, I totally forgot about this. I don't know if like this ever actually got comprehended into my brain, to be honest with you. Yeah. I might have just skimmed these parts of the book. <laughs> you just wanted to read the Demetri shit, didn't you? <laughs> Probably, like, because that was how I read books. I was like, where do they... I was like, where's the good shit? <laughs> where's the stuff? Oh, yeah. Why are oh, we talking about thing, plot stuff? <laughs> that's one thing we haven't mentioned yet. Um, as part of their bond as well, like, when Lisa gets really upset, sometimes Rose accidentally gets, like, sucked. Her consciousness gets sucked into Lisa's head. Mm -hmm. type thing and this book Rose starts to work out how to because she's been fighting doing it for two years but then she wants to find she sussed out that this is before she tells Christian to back off Lissa but she sees that Christian's following Lissa up to the chapel so she knows they're about to have another rendezvous so she forces she like works out how to send her consciousness to Lissa's head because that becomes a major um tool that the author uses in later books especially the books where the two of them are separated because that happens in a few two books in two books they're in 
completely different countries or states or whatever. So we find out what's happening with the main group through Rose going into Lissa's head. So, and it's also really important at the end of this book, Rose going into Lissa's head. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I guess Rose and Demetri have been training. Rose is starting to realise she has might have a bit of a crush on Demetri. They start bonding. They go shopping. That's an important thing. Um, Lisa, there's a school dance coming up. Lissa gets in, um, Victor is taking his daughter Natalie. Um, Natalie invites Lissa and tells Lissa she can bring a couple friends. So Lissa brings another royal chick and Rose, but Rose is grounded. But Dimitri convinces the principal that it's a, it'll be a good chance to do like to practice guarding Lissa. Um, they see a necklace while they're out shopping. Lissa can't afford to buy it for Rose, but they both really like it. And then when they get back to school, Rose is walking along a bench and then she falls, her ankle snaps, but it turns out it didn't snap, but it actually did, but we're confused at the moment. So we don't know actually what happened. And then she gets a present, um, after she regains consciousness cause she blacked out from the pain. And it's the necklace and Victor bought it for her. So that's important. Um, is there anything else before the showdown happens? I don't think so. Nothing that I can think of. Oh, there, there's, again, there's stuff with Mia. Um, later on, the later on the narrator calls her Maya like in, a, in later books, but her name's not M-I-A, so I'm, I'm just always here as Mia, so that's what we're going to call her. Yeah, okay? it's Mia, okay. isn't it? Yeah, it's M-I-A. That's how you, that, it's Mia. If it's Maya, it would be yeah, M-Y-A. Mia. Yeah, um, or M-A-Y-A. Yeah, like there would be a Y, not an I, and yeah, maybe another A, like, I don't know, but M-I-A is Mia, I think. I'm not even central. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I, I, that's one thing as well. And this isn't the author's fault. It's the publisher's fault, but they should really send pronunciation guides to the narrators. Yeah. Even for simple things like the name Neil, apparently. Um, and again, I always read Dampier as Dampier because there's no E on the end. But this book pronounces it Dampier, but later narrators call it Dampier, and I'm pretty sure it's pronounced Dampier, but I'm... Yeah, I, I was so confused, because I was like, how come the Maroi and the Strigoi are vampires, but then also you're calling the half-breeds <laughs> vampires? I didn't think that was how this went. I'm very confused, because that's how my brain took it in. Like, I didn't hear the D. Uh, I just well, heard half vampire. the time I didn't hear the D. Half the time I didn't hear D, I heard V as well. And then I'm like, no this narrated is just pronouncing it retarded. <laughs> so I was just like, yeah, so I'm Rose, I'm a vampire. And I was like, no, you're not. What? <laughs> I was so confused. I was very confused. Yeah. So don't worry, you won't be confused in later books, but it, it again, it's, and it's not as jarring as like, some pronunciation things in different series, like one of the other series that we need to do in the future, the Chronicles of Ixiar, there's two narrators for that series because there's three series, but it's like one overarching series, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And the first series and the third series are from one point of view, so they're from um, by one narrator, and the middle series is from another point of view, so that's by another one. And this chick, not only does she pronounce things in the other book, like differently to in the other books, differently, but that's annoying enough, but then when she calls size, like the weapon, Sai, she calls them Says. No. Yes. In the in the third book of that trilogy, though, she she corrects it to size. That's but she's like, I grabbed by Says, and it's like, it's not no. a Say, it's a Sai. <laughs> no, I'm not okay. No. 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 <laughs> Dampers are half-breds. 
<laughs> I love Dample. It's bush taco. <laughs> Next time you come come to Oz, I'll make you some Dample. Okay. It's yum, but I'm not okay. putting sultanas in it. I'm I'm doing plain Dample. Okay. It's Let's cooking, do it. Like, it, it you, you I'm ready. The, you, you make the dough and then you cover it in foil and then you bury it in coals and then it's cooked. You know what I was thinking about the other day? When I was in what? Oz, do you remember this? I didn't have to shave. Like, uh, No, you didn't, did you? Like, I shaved like twice because like my body was like, we're just not going to grow hair because we're confused. But like, I didn't have to shave my legs. It was like, we don't get it. So I feel like we're just not gonna grow hair right now. And I was like, why are you, I was like, why are we, why are we like this? I mean, like, it's okay, but. I'm not complaining. But I'm just, is it supposed to be like that? Like when we're upside down, we don't grow hair. I don't, I don't know. It's been a is year, that... babe. You were here yeah. a year ago. I know. A year ago in two days is when you left. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. Because <laughs> now it's just sad. Yeah, it, it, it clicked was when, fun, though. It, it clicked when it was um, the boy's birthday, and I was just like, oh, they got here a few days after his birthday last year. <laughs> mm hmm. Because we went to the zoo on your birthday. Yeah. This year for my birthday, I. Hey, <clears throat> I, my voice just cracked. We did nothing for my birthday. It was great. Just I went and had a camp day, and then we put the kids to bed, ordered pizza, cross pizza, so it was really yummy. And then we just watched The Hundred, <laughs> and that was my birthday. It was great. <laughs> it was. It was. Fun. That sounds great. That's all I wanted. I wanted to just. I just wanted a chill day, especially because it was the big three o. And like that. That's the one that really just makes you mm -hmm. go, "Wow, I'm not in my twenties anymore." So I didn't want to think about it. So we just had a nice day. <laughs> oh, Addy, this is gonna blow your mind. Their Domino's pizza is really good. <laughs> Do we have Domino's like, while you're here? Yeah. I thought we got Little Sailors. Or did we get no, both? we got Domino's. I think we, we did Domino's. Both. Maybe we did both? I know we did Domino's. And I, I know, know we definitely did Caesars. Oh, we did do both. Yes. Yes, because we definitely got Little Caesars because we got crazy bread. Yes, we did both. Yeah, because you know, here... It's like the only time you ever get Domino's is when you're like, one, some other dumbass bought it on purpose and it's free. And so I guess. And then two, if you're like, I really want their lava cake. So I guess I we'll deal with the cake. pizza. Yeah, no, but there um, in Oz, I you mean, actually would like eat it because you want it. It's crazy. No, 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 no. Americans would eat it because they want it. Here, it's still the same. Like, oh, well, worst case scenario, I guess we'll get Domino's. Um, but that's just because we have better food. <laughs> you guys, like, I miss it so much. Like, one, because I miss you, but two, also, I miss the food. <laughs> I miss the food so much. Like, ha like... 30% of the reason why I want to bounce back and forth between the countries is just so like half of my life I can be like, oh, food. <laughs> this is good. <laughs> yeah, no. Oh. Um, yeah, we, we, I, yeah, I haven't, um, obviously I haven't eaten like, like gone to America, so I haven't like had food there, but from everything I've just heard, our produce is better because we have standards. Whereas your farm, your farmers have been so spoiled. Mm -hmm. They don't up their standards ever because the government doesn't make them. Oh, and not yeah. just the government. The people don't make them. They don't go, well, this is shit. They're just like, oh, this is, this is I guess this is food. <laughs> yeah, we just go, well, it's just like this. Yeah, like... 
um, Sexy was making eggs the other day and he cracked open an egg and the yolk was yellow and he just looked at it and he was just like, what's wrong with this? And he, he threw the egg out and got another one. So it was the first time, I think, since he was like five that he'd seen a yellow egg yolk in Australia. <laughs> well, yeah, because in America, if something's like slightly wrong like that, we're just like, yeah, we guess. Well, you just don't have, you just don't have a choice. You guys have nothing but yellow egg yolks. <laughs> Yeah, I I know, but I mean, it would be like, yeah, we're just. But our, ch our chickens food. are actually fed. Our, our chickens are actually given nutrition, so we've got the nice dark orange egg yolks. It's true. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But I stopped picking on your food. You're not wrong. I I like. I came back and I was like, look, I'm not for more federal regulation, but they need to do something about our disgusting food. <laughs> <laughs> I went to McDonald's and didn't want to die afterwards, okay? I'm convinced. Because that was the first thing we did. You were like, welcome to Australia. Let's go to McDonald's. And I was yeah, like, Yeah, I was okay. hungry. It was early. You, you no, just that was the plan, plane. though. I it was great. It, it was yeah, great. So that... It was awesome. I was really happy with it. It was fun. <laughs> Let's do it again. <laughs> You want to fly here just so we can get a McDonald's breakfast? No. <laughs> That's cool. You just book back-to-back -back flights, right? Like, and there'll, there'll be like an hour layover. I'll meet you at the airport. I'll bring you breakfast, then you can fuck off back. Then you can fuck off. You can be like, since you're only here for the McDonald's. Here's your Marcus. Bye. I'm not even gonna hug you. Go away. <laughs> <laughs> and drove here just you flew here and I drove here just so you could have your just for a, a just for an egg McMuffin that's better get out most expensive egg McMuffin ever <laughs> <laughs> enjoy your four thousand dollar egg McMuffin <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't get you a hash brown. Uh, where? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, just the egg McMuffin. Nothing else. <laughs> oh. oh, God. <laughs> um, I went to an Outback Steakhouse on my first night in the States. Oh my God, Bay, when you come, that's what uh, we're we doing. Have a, we have an Outback Steakhouse here. Oh, no, that's you probably do. better here as well. It probably is, but we're doing it anyway. Honestly. Like, I, can't, I can't give you like quality food without, well, I can, but not every day, probably. One of, one of, One of my um, biggest, like, lol, like, remember when, you know, lol situations was, it was, oh, fuck, it was um, a few days after I met Stixie, um because the night after I met him, I won, like, 650 bucks at karaoke, and, <clears throat> um, Amy and I went, made the mistake that Wednesday night, well, like, well, I just got 650 bucks. Let's have, you know, girl night. So we went out, we went to Outback Steakhouse, but we were stoned. And we had endless, <laughs> like we had way too much money to spend because I just won money. And oh my God, that was a big mistake. We brought back like the next day, like we ordered so much food that we took, we took all our leftovers home and me, her, her mum and her dad all had lunch to take to work the next day and there was still extras in the fridge. <laughs> well, we made a big mistake. Like, <clears throat> and the thing was as well, right, I love their bread and when you order a steak, their you get bread this little loaf of bread. so good. Yeah, you order a steak and you get a free loaf of bread. I didn't want to, neither of us wanted a steak. So we asked if we could get the bread anyway, and then we ate the bread, and then we were too full to eat anything else that we ordered. <laughs> like we bought like I think five mains and like four entrees. Oh, sorry, you guys call them the entrees appetizers. So yeah, four appetizers and 
four, like five appetizers and four mains and two desserts and the bread between yeah. two of us. And we ate pretty much the bread and like a bite of everything else. <laughs> and I was like, never ever go to a restaurant when you're under hunger inducing drugs. Oh, that was the only again. thing I don't think we got to do was actually go to restaurants though. Yeah, no, we didn't actually go to restaurants. That's because they're all so expensive. You and me, like, if you get, like... I just didn't get, notice that we didn't yeah. do that, like... Because I got home and people were like, what restaurants did you go to? And I was like, we... We got takeout. Uh, I was like, we ate fairy floss out of a tub and then baked into the tub. We did eat veggie bite. Hey, did you ever post the video of the veggie bite ice cream? No, I... Because Matt... Um, because Maggie wanted that. Because we did it. You're right. Me, Bay, and Amy ate. I made Vegemite ice cream and the three of us ate it. I did. Bae, it. It's been a year. I know. <laughs> There's a lot of footage I still haven't edited together. <laughs> I, I think all of the taste testing footage hasn't gone up yet, has it? Nope. Neither has the mountain stuff. Yeah, Maggie demands it. Yeah, no, you guys are right. I gotta finish do a, it. Do a one year, one year anniversary <laughs> video. Like a blog post? Yeah, I should. Yeah. I will, because like I've been needing to do that for like a year. Even if nothing else goes up, at least to the veggie my ice cream. We, we Amy, Amy almost died eating that. <laughs> she did oh what were we were where were we in the thing um wait um just one sec peter i don't know because i'm in sydney i don't know what a, what is i don't know um i don't know what la pochetta is we might have it here i and i just don't know sorry we were talking about the book, weren't we? We were. Oh, we did a book club from your house. That was really fun. We did. I almost strangled you on stream. Oh, yeah. <laughs> did you put your name in the goblet of that fire? That was the wrong. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you did almost strangle me on stream. But it was really cool. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> she touched me. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm sorry. Next I time I'm want... there for two weeks, we'll do two. I feel like the one <laughs> streaming schedule I can keep up is like book club. <laughs> that was so funny though, because like the one part of Goblet of Fire I could not get through because it was like I got to this one sentence and I don't know what it is about that sentence, but it put me to sleep on the plane. So it was like, I kept sleeping through this solid 30 minutes of that book. And I tried four times. I tried so hard to stay awake and I couldn't. But I stayed awake through the rest of it. And I was like, I got, I landed and I was like, babe, here's the thing. <laughs> I did my best. I finished it. I finished it mostly. But there's a sleeping spell on this one <laughs> section of the book. And it wouldn't let me stay up. I was very tired. <laughs> and then I had a mental breakdown on the way home because I landed in LAX. I got through LAX security. I got to my gate and I just started crying my eyes out for no reason. <laughs> I was just very cranky to be like, like, you know what it was? I don't remember. But I think it was just like, I was mad that LAX is an airport. <laughs> Because it is like the worst airport in existence and I hate it. And I was just really pissed off with like the whole security thing. Yeah. And I, was, I was so cranky. I was just like, this is bullshit. I'm mad at everything. I'm so upset. <laughs> and I, my mom was like, are you okay? I was like, no. And then I roofied myself because I took like six Advil PMs and like i took something else to so i was like i'm not going to be awake on this fucking flight god damn it 
and I wasn't, <laughs> and it was great. <laughs> Oh, um, were, were, were customs as random to you as they were when you got here? <laughs> no, they were just like, oh, because like I did customs in LA and um, because I think we were like the first, because yeah, I landed in LA in the morning. And I think we were the first flight that morning to, to go through customs. Yeah. And when you're coming home like to America, they're just kind of like, welcome back, yay. And so I had water with me. And they were like, do you have any food or anything? I was like, water. And they were like, just go, <laughs> you look <laughs> dead. Um, and I was like, all right. So they didn't, they didn't do anything. Um, and then when I got there, it's like, you're just a baggage claim standing there. And somebody just walks up to you and they just go, you've been flouncing in soil and you, Can and you the answer is no. And then they're like, did you bring fruit? And you're like, no. And they're like, bye. And you're like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. I witnessed a guy say yes to the soil question. It wasn't pretty. <laughs> Well, no, we're, we're very particular about trying to keep... We were already fucked up the ecosystem here enough with fucking cane toads. We're, try, we're trying to not do anything else. Yeah. No, like, it's cane, fair. Cane it's toads just, were a bad it was choice. It's funny. Yeah, and Stixie wants us to move just, to Queensland and, and there's cane toads. Like, everyone up where he used to live have, like, a golf club or a cricket bat on their... on their porch just so they can whack the cane toads away if they come up. And I'm like, oh yeah, that, that sounds great. I, I really want to live in a place that's infested with the ugly. Have, you've seen a cane toad, right? Yes. You've shown me cane toads. Oh, oh. Uh, the last thing I want to I do is walk come outside visit and see cane one toad of them. Country. I, don't, I don't want you to do that either. But that's why we're getting the kids a bunny rabbit because then we can't move there. Because they're illegal to have as pets in Queensland. Oh, good. And I'm because I want to come and, back to Sydney. And, and he he has <laughs> said that the kids can get a bunny rabbit next year. So I'm going to get them a bunny rabbit next year because we're definitely not moving up there before then. Um, and then if he brings up again, I'd be like, "But bunny rabbit, like, what are you going to do? Tell the kids, I'm sorry, you have to give away your pet because." Daddy wants to move somewhere and where creepy toes will greet you at the door. <laughs> <laughs> so doesn't that sound like a fair trade? Bye bye bunny. Hello. No folks. more Peter Cottontail for you. <laughs> yeah. You can't even have dissexed bunnies as pets. Like I, I like that probably wouldn't be too bad if you could have you're only allowed to have dissexed bunnies as pets, but no, only magician, only magicians can get permission to have a pet bunny. They have to apply for it and go through a massive thing, and I'm pretty <laughs> sure it does have to be dissexed, but pretty much the only way you can have a pet bunny in Queensland is if you become a magician. <laughs> I looked it up. Apparently that's like one of the only reasons for exemption. If you need it for your work, such as magician, such as magician. It's like I guess I'll study if he's dead set. It, like if he demands that we do move there, I guess I'm gonna have to become a magician so I can keep the kids bunny. <laughs> Fuck. Where were we book wise? Um, I guess we're about to get to where shit goes down. Oh yeah. So how does that kick off? Um, so they're at the dance. Um, yes. Rose, Rose is allowed to go. Mia tries to start shit again. So Rose punches her or something, like because she can see that Lisa is about to have a breakdown. Um, because Mia is being really nasty to her. Um, mm -hmm. so Rose punches her to get the pressure off of Lisa. Um, and Lisa. Rose is getting dragged out. Lissa is run, runs off and Rose knows that Lissa is about to do some more cutty cut because, oh, that's another thing. Lissa does the cutty cut when she feels 
too overwhelmed. Um, so she send, she sees Christian and she yells at him to go after her, hoping that, you know, he listens. She goes back to her room. She's storming around her room, freaking out. And then she gets jerked into Lissa's head um, and that her and Christian are being, like Lissa and Christian are being attacked by guardians. Christian gets knocked out and then Lissa gets knocked unconscious. So Rose gets snapped back to herself. And then she's like, fuck, I need to go and tell Demetra about Lissa. And then she starts getting confused. Like, she's like, Lissa, what about Lissa? I don't, I, I just know I need to get to Demetra. So then she goes to Demetra's room and just, he opens the door and she just pounces on him and starts making out with him. And he's like, what the fuck? And, but then he gets into it and the two of them almost have sex. But then he pulls himself away and realizes that the necklace that she's wearing is charmed and he tosses it out the window and then Rose starts to remember what happened and she tells him. So that he's, and he's like, no. And she's like, yes. And he's like, fine, I trust you. They tell everyone else and they're like, no. But then they go up to the chapel and see that Christian's unconscious up there. Um, so they're like, oh, I guess that actually did happen. How many How many Strigoi were there? And she's like, no, it was Guardians. And she, they're like, what the fuck? No, it's not. So then she goes back into Lissa's head and turns out it, she's with Victor Dashkov and his Guardians. Mm-hmm. Um, and they're like, what? What the fuck? I don't get it. And, but they know enough. Like, while, they, while they're doubtful that Prince Victor Dashkov is involved, they still know that. Melissa is gone and Rose knows where she is. So they're like, let's pony up and go. So they get into their cars and to go. Um, they take Rose with them because she can track Lissa. Um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, and then while they're following, because they're a few hours behind, because, you know, Rose and Dimitri were getting naked with each other and then it took a while for them to believe her. Um, so they're a bit behind. And while they're there, um, Rose keeps on going into Lissa's head. And then we get Victor's Dylan speech of, I want to save the Maroi, but then I got sick. I was supposed to be the next king, but now I can't be. Alas, the Maroi need me. The Strigoi are winning. You must heal me. And she's like, I can't heal you, Uncle Victor. And he's like, but yes, you can. You healed Rose. And she's like, oh, that was just an ankle. You know, because it turns out Rose actually did break her ankle when she fell through the bench, but Lissa healed it. Um, yeah. And she's like, but that was just an ankle. And he's like, no, I'm not talking about that. The car accident. And she's like, Rose wasn't that hurt. And he's just like, you're right. She wasn't that hurt. She was dead. You raised her from the dead. And that's why you two have a bond. Um, and then we find out more about spirit from Victor. Um because he studied spirit, he knew that he worked out after the accident that Lissa was a spirit user, realized she could heal him. And so, and then she, um, he has a Maroi follower with him, an air user who tortures Lissa with air for a bit until Lissa finally agrees to heal him. Um, and then they get there and um like rose and all that get there um so they park Mm -hmm. park and all the guardians get out make rose stay in the car but then lissa compels the people watching her to fall asleep on something so she can escape so then rose is like fuck you know i should go get her because she doesn't know that rescue is coming because the bond's one way yeah and then turned out christian Christian's there too. He's stowed away in the trunk. <laughs> good boy. Yeah, good boy, Christian. Yeah. So, uh, um, so they're running to find Lissa. Um, and Christian can't keep up because it's the middle of the day. Um, and the sun's hurting. And he's like, why are you waiting for me? Fuck off. Go. I'll catch up. So Rose runs off. And then there's psy hounds, which are like psychic wolves. Like they're wolves that have like a psychic bond to each other and they only Maroi can control them and they hate damp ears. And so then they come and they're like, and then Christian's like, no, fire. Cause he's a fire user. Um, and, but then he gets mauled by psi hounds and then it, he's dying and Liz is too weak to heal him. So then Rose is like, 
to a drink bitch. So she drinks from Rose and then heals Christian. Victor gets caught and they go back to school. And then and then Rose tries to talk to Dimitri about what happened between the two of them. Um, and he's like, no, that was a spell. I feel nothing for you. Goodbye. And so then Rose goes, sneaks in to see Victor and she's like, take the spell up, take the spell up. And he's like, there, no, that just enhanced your feelings for each other. But the feelings were already there. If they weren't, it wouldn't have worked. Um, so I don't know what you want from me. And then, bam, random Strigoi daughter appears. Victor's daughter has turned herself into a Strigoi to free her father. And she's like, Victor, like, Rose is like, what the fuck, dude? And Natalie's about to kill Rose, and then Demetri comes in and kills her, and Victor has escaped, but he gets recaught. And, yeah. And then Lissa gets back with, like, Lissa officially starts dating Christian, and she doesn't care about popularity anymore. She's on antidepressants to... Um, keep her mental health in check, but it blocks her from spirit. Um, St. Vladimir was a spirit user as well, and Rose finds out he lived to a nice, ripe old age and died naturally. So, yay, like, you can live to old age as a spirit user. Happy days. And I think that's the book. Yeah. And then I think, I forget, how does she finally have that conversation with Dimitri? Oh, um, she's... Oh, that's right. Um, so Rose gets hurt pretty bad um, when Natalie's attacking. Um, and Dimitri's carrying, like, running, rushing her to the hospital wing. And she's, and Rose is, like, half conscious. And she's just like, Victor said the spell wouldn't have worked um, if Blair, and he's like, I do want you, but I we can't be together. And she's like, why? And he's like, because we're supposed to be looking after Alyssa. And if I let myself have feelings for you, I'm going to care more about your safety than hers. So this isn't going to work. And she's like, and to Rose's credit, like poor thing. She's like, I guess. Yeah. She's like, well, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, it's just very sad. Yeah. And, that's just the beginning, like, of Rose putting Lissa, like, Lissa's best interest before herself. Um, God damn it, child. I'll be back in a yeah. second. Um, yeah, because they have that conversation, and then um, it's pretty much, like, everything's basically okie day, and... I think that's the end of the book, if I'm not mistaken. Um, I don't remember if anything else happens, but yeah, that's that's the end of the book. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So um, that's pretty much it for this book. Um, so it it's weird because. Like when we're trying like summer, it's plot, like there's lots of it's more like a bunch of little things that add up. And again, like there is a lot of repetitive stuff in this book and in later books as well. There's a lot of repetitive stuff, like for example, the Rose and Dimitri training sessions or this something like that, you know. Um, and in this book it was that and the dead animals was a recurring thing, but again, it was done in a way that didn't go, oh, great, another dead animal. I was like, why the fuck is there another dead animal? You know, that was the response. It's like, and then we got Lissa's mental health aftermath. Like, she responded worse each time. Like, it was, yeah. it was doing something. Well, yeah, there are just, like, a number of different plot structures that you can do, I guess. And you can do a lot of different things. They're, like, baseline pro plot st structures, I should say. And one of those is like, you just have a thing happen over and over and over again, and you do something weird each time. Yeah. And it was done well. And, and then um, in Rose and Demetri's 
yeah, inroads in Dimitri's training sessions, like she had to do a lot of running, for example. Um, but their relationship developed even with that because initially he would just sit there listening to to like 80s music and reading Western novels while she ran, but then he started running with her and stuff like that. So it showed the growth of their relationship through that. So it wasn't just, yeah. I, I did another training session with Demetri and we, I, I did a run and got grumpy with him and it was the same thing every time. Like each one had a bit of progress towards something so yeah like things actually happened and changed which is important but yeah so the next uh so the next thing we're doing is uh the next house and night book and addy will be with us uh so we're yeah. gonna Fingers work out when that is happening. <laughs> yeah she will yeah, she, she, yeah. we whip her um but yeah yeah so that's what we're gonna do and then we'll do the next vampire academy book after that so yeah anyway um Thank you guys for watching, and yeah, us, we will see you guys next time. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.